Hi, Genies. It's Fisher. Before we get started, just a quick thank you for getting Extreme Genes to where it is today. We're on radio stations all over America, and our podcast is growing exponentially. I'm often asked, what can I do to support Extreme Genes? Well, that's easy. Become a part of our Extreme Genes Facebook community and like our page. Share the podcast with your friends. Follow us on Twitter. And most importantly, support our sponsors through links on our website. They're the best in the business. Thanks again. Now let's get on to this week's podcast. Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and ExtremeGenes.com. It's been this way for generations. Dates in the Bible don't quite match the marriage certificate. Uh oh. You have found us, America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth, your congenial host on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. Hope you're having a great research week. I, I want to give a little shout out to my third cousin, Elaine, who just found me this past week, and we've been exchanging photographs and documents, and it's, it's always so exciting to connect with somebody who's just far enough away where they have a lot of things that you don't and vice versa. Great stuff. We have a great lineup of guests today. One is the founder of a company called Forever. And this is a brand new thing that could very well change the way we view storage of our data for the long term. And I'm talking about multiple generations on end. Wait till you hear this model. Glenn Meekham, the founder, is going to have that for you in about eight or nine minutes. And then later in the show, we're going to talk to a lady who finally, through the use of some technology, found the burial place of her grandfather, an overgrown cemetery in North Carolina. And what stemmed from this discovery? An astonishing story from Ann Allred, a Utah woman, coming up later in the show. But right now, let's head out to Boston and talk to David Allen Lambert, the chief genealogist for the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. Hello, David. Hey, Fish. Greetings from Beantown. How are things with you? Just awesome as always. You know, I'm kind of excited about this list of stuff we have to talk about today because there's <laughs> there's a lot of news going on right now. Where do we start? You know, sometimes we go to a place and we forget why we're there. Well, Edgar LaTulip uh, has been reported missing for three decades. Apparently, this 21-year-old years ago was traveling on a bus to Niagara Falls and because of an injury, ended up forgetting who he was. Wow. So all of a sudden, he has determined who he is. He had suffered a head injury. But now police say the DNA results have confirmed that it is who he is, and he will now be meeting up with his family for the first time in three decades. No, wait a minute. So he's in his 50s now, and suddenly he remembered his own name? Absolutely. Oh, and that's he nuts. He remembered his true identity. And the DNA and, and test I'll... comes in, as always, and, and yes, it works for living people as well, doesn't it? It really does. You know, on that Canadian slant, maybe he'll be one of the people that will uh, go up to the Ontario Genealogical Society Conference, which is coming up in June. This is a big conference, June 3rd to 5th, and it has some national speakers like C.C. Moore, Henry Louis Gates, and our good friend Judy Russell, many of which have been on our show. Right. And it's going to be great. A lot of technological brick walls and, of course, DNA. So who knows? Maybe Edgar will go up there and find a little further in his own family tree. <laughs> or give a little lecture about how it suddenly dawned on him who he was. Amazing. You know, we've chatted before about the Neanderthal percentages that we all have. I found out with 23andMe that out of an average European, 2.7% of their DNA is Neanderthal. Well, I'm 2.5. Right, so you're just a little we're... below. I think I'm like 2.9, which explains my really furry eyebrows. Well, that's why we do radio, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You know, it's funny. I was reading an article, and I, I talked to you about it earlier this week, that it's, they're saying that if you have a tendency to have more Neanderthal in your DNA structure, depression, and also an addiction to nicotine. Really? So 
Yeah, I, I didn't know they had cigarettes back tens of thousands of years ago. But apparently, you know, these depressed Neanderthals were smoking, chain smoking. I, no, I, David, I don't think that's what they were saying. I think they were just saying if they were around today, they would have a tendency for nicotine. But it is a funny exactly. picture, isn't it? That's, yeah, it is the truth. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. I don't smoke. Maybe if my percentage was a little higher, maybe I would be the person that would be smoking. Who knows? Who knows? Fascinating yeah. find, though. It is with DNA. It's just amazing how more and more we're finding out about our past. You know, we're always thinking about how long our data is going to be around. And obviously, Forever is offering some wonderful solutions and a new technology, which isn't commercially available yet. But the university in Southampton, England, has come up with a five-dimensional data storage. Yes, five-dimensional. What? That, yeah, it saves on it 360 terabytes of data and can be safe, forget this, 13.8 billion years. And, and they've tested that, huh? <laughs> uh, well, I think they still have some in the works. And maybe they got a time machine that they've tested out. But apparently, this data storage has already been used to save the Magna Carta, the King James Bible, optics by Isaac Newton, and the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So far, Blu-ray discs can store 128 gigabytes of data. A 5D disc can store... 3,000 times that amount. And again, it's not commercially available, but just think of the possibilities of being able to store a complete library. Wow. On one image. Insane. It is. Now, when you are at the library, my tech tip or <laughs> my pet peeve is that sometimes a genealogy program or when you're writing up your genealogy and you're looking at old English records. Now, 1837 is when civil registration happened. Right. So they did have birth records. In England, yep. If you're looking if you're looking at a 1712 date, chances are it's not a birth date. It's a baptism date. Right. So do put BAPT or BPT or baptized or whatever you'd like to put down. And don't put it as the birth date. The child probably was not born the same day. Yeah. Countless genealogies have listed it as a birth date. And nowhere does it say in the original that the child was born that day. So That's a good pet peeve, and I'm with you on that. Yeah. Just be a little bit more detail-oriented, and it'll save frustration for future generations down the line trying to figure out where you got that from. NEHGS, of course, from American Ancestors, has a guest user database. And one of the databases that we have, and I mean, this is specifically for Boston. It's a Boston 1890 city directory, but I can't stress to all of the listeners how important urban directories from 1890 are. With the loss of the 1890 federal census, urban city directories or poll tax lists or county tax lists for the year 1889 to 1891 could successfully pinpoint where your family is that where we don't have the 1890 for the majority of the United States. That's right. That's right. Good advice, David. Talk to you next week. All right. And coming up next, we're going to talk to Glenn Meekham. He is the founder of a company called Forever, and he may just have the long-term solution that all of us are looking for in family history to preserving your records. Good stuff coming up next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Well, Genies, my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. World, and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now MyHeritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. 
Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classrooms settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org/treeapp to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org/treeapp to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. And welcome back to Extreme Genes, America's family history show on ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, the radio root sleuth. And with all that's going on with Roots Tech, we're starting to examine all kinds of new products and services that are available that are going to make our lives as researchers and preservers so much easier. And I'm very excited to have on the line from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Glenn Meekum, who is the founder of a company called Forever.com. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hey, Scott. What a pleasure to be here. This is exciting stuff because uh, people who listen to this show regularly know that we're always fretting over all the challenges that preservation brings to us, especially in the digital realm. And you may have come up with the ultimate solution, this forever.com. Tell us about this whole thing, because this looks like it may be the solution. Basically, I'm a successful Internet entrepreneur. I've been at this for, gee, 25 years right. now. I, I founded a company in the 90s called Free Markets, which was a very successful B2B e-marketplace, and uh, took it public, and we did very well with it. But in more recent years, going back in the 90s, early 90s, I, I'm a Gulf War veteran. I got this before my whole internet career, but I got back from the war, and I spent some time that summer videotaping my then living grandparents, my wife and my living grandparents. And we have six different grandparents who are still alive, and we have incredible interviews. And it was basically the summer of 2012. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, I've got these interviews. I had them on VHS when I first did them. I distributed them to all my family members. But, you know, none of them know where they are anymore. And, of course, I had the tapes. And I was digitizing them. And I was thinking, really, what I need is I need a permanent cloud storage solution where I can store these and know that not only myself in 10 years and 20 years, but my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren can all access these, find them, even if there's a break, even if there's some you know schmucky grandchildren who don't care about family history and family memory preservation. Hey, the great-grandchildren will. I need to put them on the cloud in a way where I know they're going to be searchable and findable. So I went looking for a service that, that provided permanent cloud storage and sharing, and it didn't exist. In fact, every major service, including you know Google Plus and Amazon cloud and Dropbox and everybody else explicitly says, don't trust us. We don't preserve your stuff long term. We can shut you off at any time. And all you got to do is go and look at their terms of service to know that that they explicitly renounce permanence. So I realized there was no solution on the market. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. I start things. I try to solve problems for people. And I said, this is a huge opportunity. So I started the company and I was able to buy 
the URL, the domain forever.com. And it was the perfect name for what I wanted to do. So, yeah, we are forever.com. We are the world's first and only permanent shareable cloud storage site. It, it basically, it's your permanent digital home. We give people full digital rights. They own everything they upload to the site. They have their own subdomain within the forever domain where they can organize and keep all their stuff. It's Right now, it's just photos. Within the next couple of weeks, we're releasing documents so you can save all your documents, PDF documents there. Right. Um, and then we'll be doing video and audio in the near future. I don't have exact dates yet, but and at this point, we have thousands upon thousands of members already who are, um, in fact, you know, members of our service who are, in fact, using Forever.com to store and share and manage all their photos and soon documents and soon videos. Now, this is very exciting because I'm thinking there are also going to be changes in formats over time. And I'm assuming that you've made some allowance for some of that so that as things change, just like you mentioned, the old VHS, I mean, people can't even play them half the time anymore. Right. There's oh, a yeah, way yeah. for you to deal with that upgrade to keep them relevant. Right. For all of us, you know, I'm, I'm in my young 50s, and so all of us, uh, our age group, know that, okay, there are these, you know, the VHS to, to, to DVD is a great example of the format change. And, of course, before VHS tapes, there were 8-millimeter um, video for in your in your personal video camera. And, of course, Super that was the Super 8 and everything <laughs> else, Super 8 films. But even in the digital world, we know that digital formats change. Hey, a great company was WordPerfect in, in its heyday in the in the 80s. Of course, it's long gone. But if you're like me and you wrote papers in college in WordPerfect, you can no longer access those files without very, very specialized software to kind of bring back to life old files. Right, convert it. Right. So the problem we're all going to have is that today's digital photo formats, today's digital video formats are not going to be viewable by tomorrow's devices. And so here's what we do. When you buy permanent storage with Forever, most of the money you pay for that permanent storage up front goes into the Forever Guarantee Fund. We're not just an internet company, the software right. company. We're all that. But we're like a life insurance company. We're like MetLife for your photos and your videos. Well, don't so, cemeteries do that kind of thing as well? They kind of a, do do that kind of thing. A, a perpetual um, care you know, fund. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a reserve fund. I, I like to think of it as less of a cemetery fund, as more of like an, a long term life insurance sure. fund, where we're a privately owned company like a MetLife, but in other words, we're private sector. We're not public sector um, like a university. So we're like an insurance company. Most of the money goes into the Forever Guarantee Fund, which is a restricted fund, like an insurance reserve fund, in a diversified portfolio, stocks and bonds, et cetera. It generates income every year. That income is used to pay for the storage and also to pay for some bandwidth and to pay for the digital migration of the files and the maintenance of the files. So over time, part of our, our contractual commitment to our customers is that we will digitally migrate file formats so that your great-grandchildren really can see all the stuff you put together and all the stuff you saved. Down the line, though, what, what happens now to your company? What happens if somebody just doesn't want to maintain it anymore? How does it get taken care of? Well, we, we put all kinds of safeguards in place. Like, so with every single customer we have, there's a contract, and it, that contract is available. You can just go to forever.com and look at our terms of service and the investment policy for the Forever Guarantee Fund. It's all publicly available. But with every single individual permanent member of our service, there's a contract with them. And it says that, oh, the, the money they're putting into the Forever Guarantee Fund is restricted. It only can come out in these very small increments to pay for these specific storage and data migration and things like that. And so, and we have thousands and thousands of these customers already. So basically, the money that's in the Guarantee Fund, just like it was, if it was an insurance, if it was with MetLife, an insurance company, the money's restricted. And it's restricted by contract between the customers and the company. And any new, you know, we, if we go public, if there's any, you know, obviously I won't live forever. You know, I intend to be CEO of this company for at least 20 more years. Mm -hmm. But there'll come a point in time where, you know, there's a management transition. But the future management, no matter whether, whether it's um, you know, public shareholders or private shareholders, doesn't matter whether we're owned by another company eventually, doesn't matter. The, the, the new management will be restricted by the same set of contracts. You know, at that point, it'll be millions of contracts with millions of customers. And if any management ever tried to violate that, it'd be a massive class action lawsuit sure. against them by all of our customers. So all these other companies, all these other cloud storage companies have all these limitations and all these things they say they won't do. And, all, and they, they shirk responsibility. They shirk uh, long-term permanence. 
we embrace it all, and we, we say, yeah, we're taking on all those commitments. We do, and, and on behalf of not only management today, but future management, we're taking on all those commitments, and future management can't walk away from those commitments because they're contractual. So the secret to what we're doing with permanent shareable storage is, yeah, there's a technology component, but there's also this financial component of the Forever Guarantee Fund and the way that's managed like a life insurance company. Right. And then, in addition, there's this whole contractual infrastructure, which, again, is precedent-setting. No one's ever had these kind of commitments for cloud storage before. So, so we give a guarantee. We say to our customers, you become a permanent member of Forever. You put money into the Forever Guarantee Fund as a customer. We guarantee that we will preserve and maintain your photos, your, your, your material, your information for your lifetime, plus 100 years. But then it's not just the 100 years. Our goal is many, many, many generations sure. beyond the 100 years. We can't legally guarantee past that 100 years because there's some laws in place. It just it starts to be not credible to offer a guarantee that's out more than 120, 130 <laughs> years. But our goal is many, many, many generations beyond. And I keep mentioning life insurance for a reason. MetLife is a fabulous company, and they've got right. fabulous advertising. Um, and they were founded in 1864. Right. Okay. If you do a great job building an institution, and when I say you, if, if one, if a person, if a manager, if a leader, if an entrepreneur does a great job building a great institution and it has that long-term funding mechanism like a life insurance company, like MetLife, it can last hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. That's what my team and I are doing. That is an astonishing vision and very exciting at so many different levels because it is the problem. I was just thinking as you were talking about all this that when I was a kid in the late 60s and early 70s, the oldest pictures within my own family that I'd ever seen were 80 or 90 years old. Yes. And we're going to have descendants who are looking back at images of us two, three, four hundred years from now, potentially, assuming we don't blow us all up by then. Right, assuming that, but I, you know, I'm I'm a I'm an optimist. Humanity makes a lot of mistakes, as we all know. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> we're all flawed individuals, right? And collectively, we're flawed. But with God's help, we seem to muddle through. And I think we're going to muddle through just fine. I think that our descendants will be there in two, three, four, five hundred years. I actually think that, you know, I, I like to kid about, you know, it might be a colony on a moon of Saturn. The, the Internet is going to be there, too. You know, it'll, it'll evolve and everything sure. technologically. But your, your memories in a physical book on a bookshelf, it's going to get lost. It's going to get burned. It's going to get flooded. Most of our family memories never get organized and are thrown out in dumpsters when people – I've seen it in my own family. Sure. There, was, there are Civil War pictures. I have a, an, a, an ancestor who was a, an Irish immigrant who then served in the North in the, you know, the Union Army in the Civil War. My father, when he was alive, remembered photos of this man, and those photos don't exist. Where did those photos yeah. go? They were lost. Kills right. The only way it's going to be there long term is if you put it in a long term cloud right. storage solution. I and see that's where you're what going with it. And we're the first in the world to do it. I love it. Glenn Meekham, he's the founder of Forever.com. You've got to look into it. Thanks for coming on, Glenn. Hey, thanks so much, Scott. Have a great day. And coming up next, we're going to talk to a Utah woman who finally made the discovery of her grandfather's gravesite after many years of looking. And wound up with a whole new project. Wait till you hear what happened to Ann Allred. Coming up next in five minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks.
Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. We are back. Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. It is Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth. And uh, you're always excited about finding your stories of discovery and the amazing things that happen on the journey to find your family history. And one of the people I found with an incredible story was at Roots Tech, Ann Allred. Ann, where are you from? I live in Centerville, Utah. All right, Centerville, Utah. And you had a a, a tale that went back to North Carolina some time ago, and all of a sudden it took on a life of its own. Get into this. How did it start, and where did it go? Back as a child, my mother and my aunt kept this family story alive, which caused me to continually yearn and search for this sweet great-grandmother of mine. Her name's Marinda Ann Thomas. And her son, Rodolph, is my grandfather, and he was born and raised in Pink Hill, North Carolina. He died in 1967, and I was told that he was buried next to his mother in the Thomas Family Cemetery in Pink Hill. Now, fast forward, (laughs) for a lot of years, we tried to figure out where that was, and in 2006, my sister-in-law made a trip to North Carolina. Through divine intervention, she found this little cemetery, which was in the middle of a farmer's field, and it was an overgrown jungle. I mean, I'm not wow. exaggerating. Now, wait a minute. When you say divine intervention, what happened? Well, she asked all around town. She was at the library, and they said, you know what? we got to call so-and-so. He knows everything. <laughs> and Mr. So-and-so came and said, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And he gave her some weird directions, like over the river and through the woods, because this is out in the country, and there are no directions to give for this. Sure. So because of that, she was able to find the place. But years later, when I wanted to know exactly where it was, she said, I cannot tell you. I cannot (laughs) retrace my steps. So now, fast forward again to 2014 Roots Tech, and there was a booth called Find a Grave. Yep. And we talked to the fellow there, and this gentleman says, we can find any headstone out there, provided someone took a picture of it. And I said, all righty, let's put this to the test. I can't find my grandfather's headstone, Rodolph Justin Humphrey. So I typed him in, nothing, nothing comes up. And he said, okay, let's put in someone else. I said, okay, he's supposed to be buried next to his mother, Miranda Ann Thomas Humphrey. So I put in her name, and voila, <laughs> Uh, her name came and included there was a picture of her headstone. Hello. And Thomas Family Cemetery. Right. But this is what was cool this time, Mr. Fisher. There were GPS coordinates connected to that site. Yeah, that'll be helpful. Yeah, very helpful. So this was in February. I, I excitedly called my daughter, Marinda, who lived in Springfield, Virginia. And she said, okay, we'll do it, Mom. And so April 11th, they drove to North Carolina. The next morning, using the GPS, they drive to this address. Well, here they are on a country road, and they're surrounded by farms and fields and a few houses, and the GPS says, you have arrived. But Uh oh. But where? You know, here we are on this road. Fortunately, my little grandson had to use the bathroom. They stopped the car, walked across the street, and knocked on the door, a little brick house, and Mr. Ralph Cottle answered the door. And not only did he let my little grandson use the bathroom, but he was the man that they needed to talk to. He owned the land, 
and knew exactly where that cemetery was. It was right in the middle of his cotton field. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> so then he says, follow me. He gets in his truck. They just drive down the road at just a short distance. And sure enough, they were close. They just didn't think to go up through a field. They drove up a little lane, come to find out it was a cousin's property. He had a pig farm. And then they walked across the newly planted cotton field. And there, in the middle, was a little tiny cemetery. It's 85 feet by 60 feet. And it was indeed the Joseph Thomas Family Cemetery. Now, it was overgrown. So Mr. Cottle left them on their own. My son-in-law climbed up and over. There was a cinder block kind of wall around it. He climbed up and over and ripped out the vines that had sewn the gate shut and tried to let the family in. Fortunately, straight in, right in front of the gate, not too many feet, was an upright headstone of Miranda Ann Thomas Humphrey, the namesake of my daughter, Miranda, who's there finding it. And they look around, and and she said, Mom, I could see headstones towards the back, but the undergrowth was so thick, I couldn't even get back there. And her children had on flip-flops and shorts, and they were getting cut and bleeding from the thorns. It was quite an ordeal. And after a little bit of time, I don't know exactly how much time, they kind of just decided they were through, but they couldn't find Grandpa. At the very last minute, my son-in-law, Elijah, pulled out a wire that he had been, it had been suggested he bring, and he started poking around in the ground. And two or three pokes, and all of a sudden, clink. Oh, clink, boy. Clink, digs, 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 and under several inches of earth, there was the headstone of my grandfather, Rodolph Humphrey. There he was, and Elijah continued to poke around, and right next to him was his sister, who I my Aunt Blanche, who I didn't know was buried there. And as it turns out, there were five rows, it turned out, of headstones, and they were all children of Mary Susan Miller Thomas, who's the matriarch of this family. And the find the grave records had said there were 17 people buried there, or 17 headstones, all right? So this was in April. My daughter calls me, and we are just rejoicing together, as you can imagine. And I say, okay, I'm coming. i got to see this place. But if you know me, I can't just go and say, there it is, and yep, it's a mess. I knew (laughs) I had to do something about it. So although Ralph Cottle owns the land, he has a tenant who farms the land. And I got a hold of him, and he said, my cotton will be harvested mid-October, and by mid-November I will be planting winter wheat. So there's your window if you're going to come in here. Wow. We had to wait, but in the meantime, I read and studied about cemetery restoration. I talked to all kinds of people. I got in touch with an LDS ward in there called the Albertson Ward. Okay. Alden spoke with the bishop and said, can you help me? And they were so kind and gracious. This project never could have happened without them. We were due to arrive October 29th, Saturday, November 1st. We had a big work party organized because I was bound to determine to clean this place up. Well, Miss uh, Jean, the man who I'd spoken with, called me a week earlier and said, there's a big storm coming in. We cannot wait for you to come. If we wait, we won't get this equipment in there that we need to get these trees out of there. And there were big trees that were pushing over these headstones. Many of them were broke, wow. cracked, and tipped over. So the Saturday before I got there, Gene and his work crew went in. They worked, 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 I guess, way longer than they had ever anticipated. So when we arrived a few days later, it, of course, did not look like the pictures I had been given (laughs) because now the big trees are out. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. My initial thought was, oh, no, what have we done? Because it went from this neglected, overgrown jungle to this bare, alone, and dreary world. I can never tell this story without um, feeling the emotion that I had as I stood there on the very ground that these people had walked on and I felt them I felt them there with me and I sat down on a stump and cried for about an hour and then my husband said we came a long way we got to get to work and then we proceeded to clear the stumps and the and the underbrush and after we were done cleaning up find the grave said there were 17 headstones we found 37 Oh, my gosh. Those have all now been captured, and Find a Grave now records that there are 37, including my grandfather, whose name was not even on the list. Dan Allred, what a great story. And uh, what great service, by the way, those people provided for you. 
Oh, amen to that. Yes, it could not have been done without their assistance. Thank you so much for sharing your story, and I'm sure it's going to inspire other people to think, hmm, I can do this too. (laughs) That's right. Thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thank you. And coming up next, it's Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority, with his stories of nightmares from Roots Tech. Problems people came to him with at the booth, and he'll tell you some of the solutions he gave. Coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Hi, Genies. It's Fisher. So excited to tell you about our very first Extreme Genes Family History Cruise, September 13th through 18th, 2016. We'll be leaving out of Boston on Royal Caribbean with stops in Bar Harbor, Maine, St. John, New Brunswick, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. On days we're at sea, join me and David Allen Lambert, Chief Genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org, for lectures and roundtables on several genealogical topics. See where your patriot ancestors ancestors fought in the revolution or where your loyalist ancestors claimed their new homes for pricing go to our extreme genes facebook page or visit extremegenes.com now is the time to make your reservations because when the cabins are gone they're gone call robin at columbus travel at 1-800-373-3328 extension 1010 And be sure to ask her about our special pre-cruise excursion in Boston David and I look forward to seeing you Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Did you know that FamilySearch Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classrooms settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. It is preservation time at Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. It is Fisher here with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority. And uh, Tom, I'm still just getting my voice back here after <laughs> Roots Tech trying to talk over the noise and fighting oh, a little bit of a cold. But it was, uh, wow, what a time it was. What a party. Oh, yeah, it was brutal. I mean, I, I was hoarse for a couple of days, which my kids loved because I couldn't yell at them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, some of the things we picked up there. A lot of people came to my booth wanting to go to your booth because they'd heard you on Extreme Genes. And one guy was talking about, I've got everything taken care of for a long time because I listened to Tom and I put all my stuff, I digitized it on Tio Uden discs. And I'm thinking, well, I know you say they're the best ones out there. I guess the question is, is how long will they last? You know, it's really hard to say. You know, I'm not a scientist by any stretch of imagination. I don't play one on radio either. However, these discs, I've been using them for 20 years as long as they've been out. And no matter what you buy, you can buy Ferrari and you might get a lemon. 
Right. I have never had one come back. We tell all of our clients, if one of your discs ever fails, bring it back. We'll do the transfer for you at no cost. If it's a duplicate, we'll make you a new duplicate. And knock on wood, I have never, ever had one come back. They say they're a 100-year disc, but, I mean, there's no way to know. Like I say, we've had them for 20 years. We know they're that good. And from what I understand from the, the Geek Squad is some kind of an algorithm that they can figure out by the quality of the die. They do testing like they do with cars, real hot conditions, cold conditions, different things, and see how the die itself breaks down. So it's just like the thumb drives we tell people. All thumb drives aren't created equal. All cars aren't created equal. So like thumb drives, they have the better circuitry, the better chipboards on them. They last longer. Right. So the die that they use in a Taiyudin disc is a higher quality die. And that's why it costs a little bit more because it's more expensive to make that kind of a die. And that's where I really get confused why everybody doesn't use Taiyudin discs because we're not talking about one disc is 30 cents and one disc is $5. We're talking about 30 cents to 60 cents. Wow. And when you buy a whole bunch, it's even a smaller deal. And so the only thing that I want to tell our listeners is, yeah, Taiyudin discs, there's no reason not to use Taiyudin discs, absolutely none. However, if you're buying them online, make sure you are buying them from a reputable dealer because some of the stinkers out there, they know that everybody wants Tao Yudin. Tao Yudin won't sell to them for some reason. I don't know. And so they either get off brand or something like that and say, hey, these are Tao Yudins. So make sure if you buy Tao Yudins on the Internet, make sure they come in a cake box and they'll usually have a label on them that says either Tao Yudin or JVC by Tao Yudin. Okay. And if it doesn't say that, unless you totally trust the people, then it's not a Tao Yudin disc. Sometimes a disc, when we buy them, we buy them in such huge quantity, they come to us shrink wrapped, but we're buying them from the main distributor so we know exactly what we're getting. But if you're buying onesie twosies in a hundred spindle, you need to make sure what you're getting is really a Tao Yudin. You don't want to be paying for a Ferrari and getting a Yugo. Yeah, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So another thing you want to do, there's a couple different levels of Tao Yudin. There's the Econo Tao Yudin and the regular Tao Yudin. I've used both. I've never had a problem with them. One thing that I would suggest, if you have a lot of kids that are going to be playing with your discs, get the discs that have what we call a white flood on the top of it. So when you buy the disc, it's actually white instead okay. of being silver. The silver ones have a coating on them as well, but that little bit of extra white on the top side makes them a little bit less susceptible to have damage to them. Plus, if they do start getting lightly scratched, you'll see it a lot quicker because the white paint will kind of be you know scratched or dirty versus trying to see it on a silver one. Because like I've said, and most people don't know this, when we talk to people, they go, oh, I didn't know that. When you're looking at a disc, the label side is where your data is. It reads it from the bottom, but that's where your data is. And in the next segment, I'll kind of go do a little bit more information on that and get back some Roots Tech information. All right. So there's so much to talk about that uh, we took away from the conference. We'll get back to it in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Masters' option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. 
Scientificstudies.com. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the GrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. All right, back at it, Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. It is Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth, with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. He is our preservation authority, and uh, we're talking about Roots Tech. We've already talked about discs. And one of the things I've noticed, Tom, at Roots Tech now, each of the last several years, is that more and more people are bringing things to Roots Tech, either to be scanned or, in your case, to, uh, to be digitized, and for other treatments that they might receive, like with photographs. There was a photograph I saw that was entirely yellow. There's a product out there. One click fixed it. Oh, yeah, and it absolutely. It was an 80-year-old picture. It was just absolutely astonishing. So people are bringing their things in to have work done on them. And I know you were telling me off air that, that you were getting horror stories being brought to your booth. Oh, it, it's really sad. And this is what I want to reiterate. My main goal is to help you get your stuff transferred. If you want to do it yourself, that's awesome. If you want to use a local company, that's great. If you want to send stuff to us, that's fine as well. You just want to be really, really careful and make sure you interview the people that are going to be doing your transfers. Just like you'd interview somebody if you were hiring to come work in your home. That's you right. You just say, hey, this is cool. Okay, yeah, build me a new house or change my bathroom. You want to get references. So you have to be really, really careful. A lot of people are really dropping their prices on transfers. And it's like the old adage, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. You need to understand that a lot of these Johnny-come-latelys that are doing transfers now are doing what we call a high-speed transfer. So whether it's your videotapes, your audio, cassettes, whatever they're transferring, they're not doing it in real time. They're doing it in high speed. And they're doing it in high speed to a computer as we've talked before on the show, computers are not made to turn stuff from analog into digital. Yes, that's right. They're made to take digital content and rearrange it, do magic with it. So what's happening is if you've ever, ever in your life used your computer and you're moving your mouse and it stops moving for a second, I don't think anybody has not had that happen. Right. So you understand that this tape is going through so fast, if that cursor freezes for even a second, you could lose a minute, two minutes of your video. Oh. And you'll never know it until you look at it and you might think, oh, I don't have a video 8 camcorder anymore. This must be a glitch in my tape. No, it's not a glitch in your tape. It's a glitch in the people that were transferring it. We had some people that brought us weddings from back in the 60s and 70s on VHS that got rejected by the big box stores. They said something was wrong with it. We had one customer that brought us in a VHSC that half their tape was in a Ziploc bag that came back from one of the big box stores and says, your tape's blank. Well, your tape's in a Ziploc bag. What do you mean it's blank? In other words, they messed up. They have no idea how to fix a VHSC to go and try it again. So they dropped that off. We're going to re-spool it onto uh, another one and try to transfer for them. But these big box stores, you got to realize that it's an assembly line, and they're only charging you these cheap prices. So they got to figure out what their cost is. So, hey, we're not going to look at this for more than a, a minute, and if something doesn't play, we're going to reject it because we're not going to charge you because sure. there's nothing on the tape. And you got high school kids running it. Exactly. Or somebody, like I heard somebody joke about somebody in the meat department is kind of <laughs> slow in the meat department today, so they have them working in the photo place. Right. That's a problem. How important are your personal things? And I tell people, you need to ask the right questions. Is this done high speed? Do you go directly from tape to disc? Do you go from tape to computer to disc? How exactly do you do this? And if they don't answer it right, you need to walk away and find somebody else, whether it's local, whether you do it yourself. Don't go to people that do high speed. If somebody's charging $15 to do a two-hour VHS tape, and you figure they're paying some kid minimum wage, seven fifty dollars an hour, and they're doing it in real time, that tape's going to cost them 
exactly what they're charging you, not counting the disc, not counting making profit or anything. So if it's too good to be true on the pricing, I guarantee it's too good to be true. All right. Great stuff as always, Tom. We will continue all of this about Roots Tech next week. Sounds good. Wow. We covered a lot of ground today. Thanks once again to Forever founder Glenn Meekum talking about his company that might be the storage solution that we've been looking for for years on end. Also to Ann Allred from Centerville, Utah, for sharing her cemetery restoration story and the, the story about how she discovered her ancestors there. Great stuff. Catch the podcast if you missed it at iTunes and iHeartRadio's talk channel. I'll talk to you next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family.